This is, this is, this is. Welcome to a brand new episode. Hey, I hope your week is going well. I know it's probably Monday for most of you. What are you doing? What do you got going on this week? I, I kind of want to know. Hit us up on the Mike Herrera Podcast Facebook group or or the Twitter. One of those three are, are the main places that I I check now and again. We'd love to hear from you. If you want to call in and leave a voicemail, we always need you. Ladies, you know we always need you. The number is 3605... <laughs> What am I saying? Uh, the number is 360-830-6660. I think I got that right. All right. Um, what's up, Bob McKnight, uh, producer, our producer-in-chief. Hope you're well. Uh, let's get to some voicemails. But before I get to that, mxpx.com, we have a little bit of summer merch left. I know we're heading into the school year, and we do have new merch coming soon. But if you don't want to miss some of the stuff we've had all summer, we've got tank tops, shorts, we've got socks, we've got vinyl, find a way home vinyl. We'll have that for a little while. Uh, but you can find all the variants and all the fun stuff. MXPeaks.com. We appreciate your support. Everything we do is all DIY. It's all in-house. And uh, every time you buy from us, it really does keep the lights on. So thank you. Um, also, that's a great way to to support what I do here with the podcast as well. It's just MXPX is kind of just the the pinnacle of every, everything for me. So I appreciate you guys. Uh, MXPX is working. I'm I'm working on a few new songs. I'm I'm writing lyrics. I'm writing parts. I'm I'm trying to put it together. So that kind of stuff. Um, but we're still you know we're still in the find a way home era finishing that out. If you haven't seen the behind the scenes stuff that we have on the MXPX YouTube, please go watch those. There's some fun stuff. If you, if you, if you like what MXPX does, I think you'll enjoy seeing some of the, the behind the scenes vibes. Um, we just put out one for, what was it? Uh, Cautious Optimistic. Yes. Filmed in Bremerton, Washington at the Big Apple Diner. Um, that place has a lot of history with us. Um, we, we've been going there forever and for as long as it's been open. And the, uh, our, one of our old roadies, Neil Hunt, used to work there. And I remember he was working there actually as a server when I was like, we're friends. And I knew he was a musician. And I was like, man, I, don't know, I know you don't want to do this forever. Come on tour with us. And he quit working at the diner. He was working at that diner for years. He quit. He went on tour with us. He's been a professional stage tech. I guess that's an easy way to say it. Stage tech ever since. Um, a lot of good times in the Big Apple Diner. So shout out to everybody that was part of that video. Um, we had a lot of fun doing it. The Bedrosians, um, Kier, his wife. Uh, we had all the kids, Johnny Boyce's kids. Uh, we had some uh, some some special guest actors and and... Um, I don't have a list in front of me, so I can't name everybody's name, so sorry. But uh, it was a lot of fun, and thank you, everybody, that was part of that. We couldn't have done it without you. All right, let's get to some voicemails. I appreciate you guys. Like I said, if you want to call in, be part of this, be on the podcast, 360-830-6660. All right, let's get to the first voicemail. Here we go. Hey, what's up, Mike? This is Lawrence from Voyager Hot Sauce. Uh, just wanted to give you a ring and uh, just let you know that uh, I was at the Bremerton show on Saturday night when you guys were out, and you guys sounded amazing. It was an incredible night. Um, got to hit up a bunch of breweries before the show, uh, local um, breweries, that is, in Bremerton. But, uh, but anyways, just wanted to say thank you so much for all your support in uh, this new venture of Hot Sauce for me. In supporting Voyager, and um, and also just had a question for you. Um, I am big into pairing, so if there is a specific uh, MXP song that you would pair with hot sauce and a meal, we'd love to hear what that is. Uh, recently, I actually uh, did some egg and chorizo tacos um, paired with a Bloody Mary, and I'm calling it the Let's Ride um, by MXPX uh, pairing a uh, meal. Uh, as well. So, anyways, uh, hope you're doing well. Thank you so much for the support. Love the show, and uh, hopefully we'll we'll talk to you soon. P.S. Let me know when you need some refill of hot sauce, and uh, we'd love to send you some too. So, all right, take care. Bye. 
Lawrence, thanks for the call, man. And thanks for coming out to Bremerton. Uh, good times. I saw your message a little late and I was just really busy that weekend anyway. But uh, man, I'm so glad you came out. So glad you got to see our hometown. Got to go to some breweries. Uh, I wonder I wonder where you went. Um, locally, downtown, there's, there's a few breweries. Of course, a little outside of downtown, there's Silver City Brewery, whom you know we love. Uh, and there's, um, there's rainy days brewery. There's, there's a couple, there's a couple other ones down there. I can't really remember them all. Um, very cool. Dude, I gotta say Voyager hot sauce is a class act. It's really, really well done. You can tell that there's quality involved. It's made with quality product. It, it's got a quality representation and branding to it. I really like what you're doing with Voyager hot sauce. So keep up the good work. I just got a, a t-shirt in the mail. Um, I'll be wearing, I wore it yesterday, actually. Sorry, bad timing. I should have been wearing it today, but I wore it yesterday. Uh, but the ghost pepper agave, I don't know if that's new or if it was just, you just send it in with the package, but I think it's new. And that I started using it right away on my breakfast burritos. I love it. It's so good. It's got just the right amount of heat. If you need more heat, just put more on it, but you don't need a whole lot for the flavor. It's got something, something really nice to it. So well done everybody if you're in seattle or in the on the west coast it's going to be a lot easier to find i think i mean it's the internet so you could find it anywhere but voyager hot sauce go check them out this is not uh, an ad or a sponsorship um lawrence has sent me hot sauce for free so i appreciate that a lot of people do you know uh, um, a few different companies have sent me hot sauce over the years and um you know I love it. Hop Singers is one of those that they have some MXPX themed um, hot sauces on. They're on the East Coast. Um, there's a liquid cartoon that does a, a really sweet style um, hot sauce. They're in California. Um, all really great companies, great people. And uh, I wish I had more time to, to spend on everything. But hey, I, I don't see, I say I have a lifetime of eating hot sauce. So we have a lifetime of talking about all our favorite brands and our favorite sauces and our favorite styles i really like this agave thing that you got going on with voyager it's really nice um i can't complain you know i'd love to hear some of your favorite hot sauces i know we keep talking about hot sauce on this podcast but it's basically <laughs> punk rock hot sauce and what else uh random strangers and animals that crawl into my life um anyway I appreciate it. All right, let's get on to the next voicemail. Thanks, thanks for the call, and thanks for coming out to Bremerton. Uh, we, uh, I'll be, I'll be, can't wait to, to taste what you got coming up next for Voyager hot sauce. Anyway, thanks, Lawrence. All right, what's next? Hey, Mike. My name is Matt. I am a big time fan. Started listening to you guys from the beginning. Anyway, hey, check it out. I own a catering company, and I offered up my services for your weekend show this weekend with the Ataris. I'm sure you're listening to this after the show, but hey, anyway, we are called Ansley Table, A-N-S-L-E-Y, new word, table, T-A-B-L-E. We do anything from fine dining caterings to big caterings for Amazon, um, musicians, so on and so forth. Next time you're in Phoenix, I'd love to cater for you on the house for free, no strings attached. Just let me cook for you, man. Uh, again, Ansley Table, A N S. L-E-Y-T-A-B-L-E. -E. Give us a like. Give us a follow. I'd appreciate it. Much love to you and the guys. Thank you so much for everything you do. Thanks. Bye. Thanks, Matt. You heard it right there. Ainsley Table um, from Arizona. Get catering. Big table. Thanks for the the offer, Matt. I appreciate it. Uh, sorry, I didn't, something didn't work out for Bremerton. We probably were just, we had too much going on. Uh, but I'd love to meet you. Love to hang. Love to try some of your food. Let's go. Uh all right, Ainsley Table. What's next? Hey, uh, Mike. It's uh, Josh Jones. Uh, <clears throat> currently over in Solardale right now. Uh, anyways, I was calling in. Uh, I, I'm going to the uh, Funkin' Drublick, uh next Sunday. Uh, mm. Excited to see you guys and everyone else there. Uh, I've got a Spotify playlist where I'm uh, catching up. It's been a while since I've listened to some of the bands. Uh, excited to see you guys, of course, face-to-face. Uh, but anyways, as I was listening to it, I also uh, was listening to your podcast. Uh, I forget exactly when it was, but the, the guy was talking about poking it at you. And I've been going through a deep dive of the collection. And 
a couple of the songs and poking it at you I really, really enjoy and I've been listening to a lot lately is uh, Too Much Thinking. And I got I got thinking, like, I'm going to do something now that's probably going to spark heated debate. People are going to be fighting. Chairs are going to be broken. Nose is bloodied. Uh, I came up with a really quick MXPX Top 10. I've tried to tackle this a million times. It never works out, and ultimately it's not perfect, but here it goes. Uh, and, and it's not even really in order from 1 to 10, 10, but my number one, this is number one. So I got heard that sound, tomorrow's another day, first and third, all of it, for always, don't walk away, the wonder years, can't keep waiting, too much thinking, uh, and let it happen. Um, those right there are just a quick um, 10 that I came up with. Obviously, there's so many more. I could pull probably like 20 more um, out of the catalog, and those could easily have been in my top 10 rotation throughout the years. Uh, I'm sure some of the songs off the new album will will get in there. Right? I really like Sunrise um, and a bunch of the other songs. Um, but, yeah, that's what it is. Can't wait to see you guys on Sunday. Um, hopefully, maybe we'll meet in the pit or something. I don't know. All right. Bye. Hey, Josh. What's up, man? Thanks for the call. I love the top 10, the quick top 10. You know, the, the, that's not a bad top 10. Like, it's not it's not orthodox. I think um, there's going to be some punk rock shows and some, some uh, doing times and things like that in there. But, but once again, I, I'm going to have to go back. I think I miss, missed one of them. But hearing something like one in three, which is a deep, b-roll uh never a popular song never a song we played live very often but it's a song that people kind of in are into uh but it's surprising because it's not something that's pushed so that's that's a song that people discover on their own through listening to the catalog um that's how you know you have a true fan you know somebody that's really spent time listening to a, a lot of songs and they've they've picked a few out that aren't aren't mainstream and you know what there's for me, the mainstream songs, like they're mainstream because they're good, they're catchy, and they're, there's like something that's hit them. But also, you know, they were at the right time and place. They were on a certain album. They were, you know, if you listen to life in general, there's not like a bunch of hit top 40 bangers on the on the album. It's it's a lot of punk songs. They're not hit songs, right? Like there's there's Chick Magnet, of course. There's there's a few things, but it's different. It's it's not like that. It was an album. It was a it was a a group of songs that, that really fit together a story and um so yeah looking at your list all of it being on there which is a newer song that's cool uh it's song two off of our two, 2018 self-titled um i don't think you had a let's maybe did you say let's ride i'm not sure if you said let's ride um i know matt was talking about or no it was lawrence was talking about the let's ride um pairing that he has with the bloody mary anyway let me get back to the, the top 10. Um, a Let It Happen. That song, uh, there's something about that song. It's such a simple song. It's such a weird song. It, it, it really is truly raw and heartfelt. And I think that's a lot of what people grab from songs like Let It Happen and songs like One and Three. It's raw. It's emotional. It's heartfelt. Um, it's, it's not, hopefully, too cheesy. You know, I think something like One and Three certainly isn't cheesy. Um, but something like Let It Happen, it could be construed as a little cheesy because I'm talking about things that really mean a lot to me. You know, I want someone to love. Someone that when I think of brings a smile to my face. That's such a simple idea that it seems cheesy. But really, that's all we want in life. We just want someone to love. We want someone that brings a smile to our face when we think about them, you know? It's just the, the most simple thing ever. And... I think that's partly why MXPX is really connected with people is because we, we take these simple ideas, put them in this vehicle that's fun and catchy and hooky and, and, and raw and real. That's, that's important. So thanks for your call, Josh. I appreciate it. Um, always always uh, love to hear some of your insight from a real you know, old school fan, somebody that's listened to our first album many, many times and listened to all the albums. Um, yeah too much thinking i've been telling myself i don't even know anybody 
No, that's Cootie's song. That's Mike's waiting. Too much thinking. It's kind of it's like yeah, I can't even think of the words right now, but I, I I know the song. I know the one you're thinking of, and it's it's a little da 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 I can tell him what's all the da 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 is that right? Is that the song? All right. Anyway, <laughs> let's move on. Let's get to another one. Hey, Mike. This is Chris from New York. I was at the Webster Hall show. It was amazing, as usual. Um, so I call, tell people to call all the time. I have a few questions. Uh, I do want to say, you know, I first discovered MXPX walk into Tower Records a long time ago, and I picked up Let It Happen. I had a couple other CDs, and I, pers- and I didn't know who MXPX was, and uh, I just thought the artwork was so cool. And then I heard the music, and then it was even cooler. So thank you for that. And, uh, and uh, so my question is, uh, you decided to add the fourth member, Chris, which I think is an amazing addition. He does put a lot of dynamics into your band. Uh, and I feel like, you know, I think he's a long time MXPX member, I mean, member fan, uh, as well. So it really, really keeps the cadence of you guys. And I really thought that was a great addition. So I kind of want to understand what your thought process was about having a fourth member and, uh, just the thought process around it. Cause I thought it was a great addition and, uh, just curious. Thanks, Mike. Uh, main, you know, the main thought process. Thanks for the call, by the way. Appreciate it, Chris. Uh, I know why you like Chris, because your name's Chris and all that. Anyway, um, the thought process, honestly, was we need to keep Tom company. He needs a friend. He gets bored. He's an only child, and he, he needs a friend. And so having Chris there, you know, when Chris joined the band, we've had a, a, a second guitar player live since 2000, 2001. Probably um, w- it was Neil first. It was our, the ever- no, it was before everything and after that tour with, um, honestly, I don't know who, we, we did a lot of tours with that record. Um, but we had piano parts and we had different guitar parts. We just needed another person, an auxiliary person. So it started with that. We've had Seth Roberts. We've had, you know, we've had a bunch of different people sort of fill in and, and uh, play guitar. And second guitar, that is. Um, Tom actually did miss a tour back in the day and neil the guy from the diner that i was talking about he actually played guitar with us it was just about a week of a tour in europe a long time ago um pretty wild times but anyway uh that kind of after that he started playing second guitar neil did um on certain things even though he was still teching he would be teching and then jump on guitar on a few things a lot like what goldfinger does now is some of our techs jeff uh, Charlie's tech in Goldfinger, he'll get up and play on a couple songs on guitar um, just when we need somebody to fill in on that, somebody's just on vocal. Um, things like that are fun. And so we started doing that in 2000. So 24 years ago, we started uh, having another guitar player and it's worked out pretty well. Um, but with Chris, you know, he joined up with us probably around, I don't know, with the exact year, 2015 or so. And we were just playing together all the live shows. And when we went to go do self-titled, we recorded with him and he's just been with us ever since. So the thought process, honestly, is it's nice to have a balance. It's nice to have another another uh, person to take, take those ideas even further. But um, Chris is uh, really good at what he does. He does his homework. If you want him to, if if he needs to learn something, he'll learn something. So it was the um, his first shows were were um, what year was it? I want to say it was 2016. Um, now that I'm really thinking about it, it was when we played three nights at the Troubadour in Hollywood, California. That was Chris's first three shows, and for those three shows, we had him learn almost every song from from our main albums. Now we left out a few. Um, but 
we did sort of like a you know our first three albums on one night our second you know three albums on the on the next night and then everything else on the third night and it was just wild but he learned all those parts he did great and from then on we knew you know he was he was um at least capable of of keeping up with us so um that's what that's what it is is like people a lot of times when you join something that's been going for so long it's really hard to like find your place and um, the fact that he gets along so well with Tom and they're, you know, the, the two guitar players doing their thing, that really helps a lot. And, it, and, it, and, it, and it's really solidified how we sound now. And uh, we love it. So, all right. Thanks for the call. Let's get to a couple more. Hey, Mike Brandt from Alberta, Canada. I called them a month or so ago and the band I was talking about, um, asking you about was Sheesh. S-H-E-E-S-H. -E -E that is a song on the Gas Collection 7 Ball magazine called Lip Service. Just wondering if you've heard from them or know about them and what they're up to. Mm -hmm. And then my second question is, I just went through some old archives and watched the Conan O'Brien show where you guys played Responsibility. Mm -hmm. Just wondering what other talk shows you have taken part of. I know there was one on MTV. Um, something about that but um, if there's any others I'd like to catch up on them yeah, thanks a lot bye yeah what's up so thanks for the call never heard of Sheesh weird I don't know I don't know why just never I somehow missed it um, yeah Conan Conan O'Brien was our best sort of late night talk show appearance our biggest we did some other shows we did um, Farm we did what was it called? Like Farm Club with Matt Pinfield. That was on MTV. We did Oddville on MTV, which was a kind of a talk show. We did uh, a bunch of other, we've done a bunch of other MTV type shows over the years. VH1, MTV, Much Music in Canada, um, Music Plus in, in uh, Montreal. And um, so... But as far as late night straight up, Conan O'Brien was the biggest we got. We were going to do Kimmel, and we were slotted, scheduled. And at the time, we were, it was our before everything and after album. And we were going to do Kimmel. We were on tour with Dashboard Confessional. And Brand New was also on the tour. They were opening that tour. And Jimmy Iovine, I think it was Jimmy Iovine at the time. Was it that album or was it Tom Wally? No, Jimmy Iovine. No, not Jimmy Iovine. It wasn't Jimmy Iovine. It wasn't Tom Wally. It was, it was, um, it was, uh, oh, I know exactly who it was. Um, anyway, it's not important exactly who it was. It was a higher up guy. He wanted to sign brand new and we were already signed and we had this slot and he's like, who do we have that, that has Kimmel? I want to try to get brand new on and it just so happened literally we're on the same tour with these guys and they call up the booker that's booking us to get on Kimmel and says hey call up Kimmel say hey we need to switch out MXPX for brand new make it so we didn't find out about this until it was already done until it was like hey guys sorry you don't no longer have that spot on Kimmel now, I don't blame Brand New for this. I don't think they knew about that either. They just got the slot. And they're like, all right, cool. We're going to go play Kimmel. So we never got to play any of that. Um, who knows? Maybe we will someday. But now it doesn't even matter. Now these, those TV shows don't get that many views. And it doesn't help you at all. Um, it's nice to be on things. It's nice to be out there, I guess, right? But that's one of those things where it's like this is a brutal business and you just got a really close up in your face example of how brutal it can be um you you always got to be training being ready ready to pounce on whatever it is the opportunity arises right so that's um that's something that you know i'll never forget but i also will never let um i'm never going to let it change me and keep me down and keep me jaded it's not going to, you know, make me hate brand new or hate uh, music or hate other bands. I, I know that we're all kind of used as pawns against each other 
a lot of times. And um, I just refused to be part of that, even though I was part of it, but unwillingly. Um, and on the wrong end, I wasn't on the good end of part of it. We had done our work. We had got, we had, we had gotten the notoriety and enough buzz to be on an upcoming, in an upcoming band to get on the show on a network television show. And you know, those network television show you're on one, it gets you on more. So like the more you're on, the more you get. And so it was just another slap in the face. And that album was nothing but slaps in the face and that's why we asked to leave the the label we asked to be let go from the label rather than doing a whole nother album for them getting paid all this money no no we won't take your money we're just gonna go because we don't like you <laughs> so ah <laughs> uh, the record label guy i'll just tell you what his name was ron fair he he was our a and r guy and the the head of the label uh, at the time you know, when we were, we were doing before everything and after. So they chose to make the single Everything Sucks instead of Well Adjusted. They chose to put on, you know, get us, kick MXPX off of Kimmel and put on Brand New. And it's just like, man, we can't, we can't win with these guys. Like, how are we ever going to do anything with, with this label? So uh, A&M was not the A&M that we had first signed to. When we first signed with Larry Weintraub and... Uh, Al Gaffar was the president of the, the label at the time. That was a, a label we were proud to be part of. They signed Face to Face. They signed a lot of really cool records, and we, we were stoked. But pretty soon after that, it changed a lot. All the employees were gone that we knew. All, the, all our head guys were gone. It was nothing but douchebags. So thanks for nothing, A&M, at the end. All right. Uh, like I said... I don't really worry about it. I don't think about it day to day at all. It's just kind of funny when, when these things, these things come up and I'm like, am I triggered? No, I'm not triggered. It's just, it's fun. It's fun to talk about. All right, let's do one more. Let's do one more voicemail. Hey, what's up, Mike? It's your attorney, Daniel from Ohio calling again. I have a question this time about your decision to start having guest vocalists on stay up all night. Uh, what, where'd you come up with the idea? How have you thought it's gone so far? The videos and live that I've seen, it's all been fun. Uh, but just was, you know, curious about what made you go that route and if you think it's as successful as it seems to be, uh, from my perspective. Thanks, man. Talk to you later. Thanks, Daniel. Nice to hear from you, bud. Hope, uh, the, uh, the law lawyering is going well. Um, stay up all night for those that haven't seen us live or haven't paid attention to our clips online. If you don't follow MXPX, please go follow MXPX on Instagram, Facebook, wherever it is. YouTube would be awesome. Uh, we're on TikTok, we're on Twitter. Um, but when we do shows, we for this era, this new album, Find a Way Home, we've been having guest vocalists come out and sing on the breakdown of Stay Up All Night. And Stay Up All Night is a, it's a punk song. It's got kind of everything. It's got slow ballad type moments and it's got fast, energetic, hype type moments. So it's just kind of, kind of got everything. Um, and we just thought, you know, I was talking to Tom Chichilla and just about what we could put into the show. And there's always a few ideas could do this, could do this. And one of those ideas was, let's have a guest vocalist on so, some, something, you know, in the new show. And for us, we always want to highlight something from the new album. And so Stay Up All Night being the single, being the main single, was just a no-brainer. And to do it on that part, I think that was Chichilla's idea, is like doing it on the breakdown, have them come out in the middle rather than at the, the beginning. Um, but then they're out there, for the rest of the song and they can sing and jump around and have a good time and then it, but it's not overwhelming and it's something that we can do with our friends around the country as we play these shows call up friends uh, try to get them like the week before to learn the song and and it's just a you know we always want to do something extra for our fans um, of course playing the songs is fun but when you do have guests when you do a different song that you normally wouldn't do that's all kind of, it adds to the specialness of a night. Um, so for us, you know, we just want to do something special for the audience every night and having somebody that they might know outside of MXPX, somebody that's, uh, it's not always from the hometown where we're playing, 
but if we can get somebody kind of local or somebody that's known in the scene, um, I think that's the main thing is just get somebody that people know from their scene. And it, and it doesn't mean they have to be the most popular punk rocker. You know, like I'm not getting Milo Ackerman every night. Um, but they're every, you know, every night it's somebody that I know, somebody that I'm friends with. You know, we just had, we had the Rev from the Drowns in Bremerton on Saturday night, on the night two. That was awesome because then we turned around. We had been talking about playing shows together and we turned around and it had gone so well with the Rev doing the guest spot. I asked his band to open the show in Tacoma and it was a real last minute thing, but boom, we did it. They came out, they rocked it. Uh, it was just really cool to to build the community. So I think aside from wanting to have a moment for the audience every night and have a different moment, even though it's the same part, but it's a different person. It's the way they sing it. And it's, it's not going to be me singing the same thing every time. Aside from that, it's about community. It's about me reaching out, Tom reaching out, somebody reaching out to a friend, to an acquaintance, to somebody that we know is in this band, but we've never talked to them before, but we can like get their number through another friend. It's about that because then you have a new connection. You have a new person that you can reach out to and they can reach out to you. So it just builds the punk rock community. It builds the music community in general. And that, you know, I love. All right. Thank you guys so much for listening. I appreciate you. If you want to call in and be part of this podcast, you can just give me a topic and I'll go on it. Give me a question, tell a story, Whatever it is, I appreciate it. Just be fun, be funny, or interesting, or crazy. Whatever it is, I want to hear about it, and I want to hear your best stories, all right? The number is 360-830-6660. Leave me a voicemail, all right? MXPX.com for all your needs, all your MXPX and punk rock clothing, vinyl. We got that. We got socks. You know it. Um, shout out to Bob McKnight one more time, all right? One more time. Peace.